over Britain, animals are being born, rearing the next generation, from hedgehogs to great apes like these gorillas, from cats to cart horses. We'll be travelling all over the UK, following the stories of the births wherever they happen. In zoos, on farms, in people's homes and out in the wild. We'll meet the people who are going to be responsible to make sure that they arrive safe and sound and hopefully on time. We'll be there to witness the trials and tribulations because as a vet I know that not everything goes to plan. <laughs> we'll share in the joy and the heartache of Britain's never-ending animal baby boom. Coming up, we meet Britain's only pair of spotted hyenas and follow the birth of their twin cubs. And we're in the West Country to witness the first shaky steps of a newborn zebra foal. But first... Not everybody's satisfied with a regular pet like a cat or a dog. A few years ago, there was a real craze for these guys. Micro pigs. And in Bedfordshire, there's a woman who's crazy about them. I love them because they're amusing. They don't require 24-7 looking after. I like the fact that they're strong. And I just love pigs. <laughs> the pigs are micro compared to what a full-grown farm pig can get to size-wise. Come on. Come on. Two miniature lines of pig exist naturally, the Maori Kuni Kuni and the Vietnamese Potbelly Pig. These have been bred down to produce the Micro Pig. Although they're very much nowadays viewed as pets, ironically, the original reason for breeding these tiny pigs so small was that they could be kept in labs to be used for human research because their skin is so similar to our own. Not this little one, of course. All of the pigs that Mark and Caroline have kept over the last six years have been just as pets. I just thought they were lovely. Had one as a pet, had it indoors, realised it was a lot happier outside, got another one and really thoroughly enjoyed doing it and hence it's grown. <laughs> one of Caroline and Mark's sows, Perky, is about to give birth any moment now. I absolutely love births. <laughs> it's fascinating, you don't know how many, you don't know what colours. I just really enjoy it. I love them. Birthing um, or farrowing with a, with a pig is, is you know, it, it's a worrying time. Sometimes it might be a new mum. But either way, you'd want to be there. You know, you want to see that the, the, every piglet born gets the best possible chance. And so we worry about it that much that we installed CCTV we're able to see indoors what's going on outside and then react when the birth in or farrowing again is at a much more advanced stage. Whoever's giving birth can be watched on the TV. You don't interfere, you let them naturally build their nest, get going. As soon as we see one start to pop out, straight out to help, <laughs> if needed. Later that afternoon, Perky settled down into her sty to prepare for labour. Here she is, gathering her straw in her mouth to take into her nest. Very, very agitated. She's busy building her nest. Perky's breathing is now getting slower and her ears are twitching. It shouldn't be too long before she gives birth. And at 4 p.m., the first piglet is born. <laughs> this pig lay down and started delivering in the afternoon, so most often they'll wait until sunset. Half an hour later, piglet number two arrives. <laughs> Beautiful. 
those piglets will be, you know, wanted to get very close to their mum quite quickly. She wouldn't normally deliver milk or the first feed colostrum until they've all arrived, and then she'll call them all together and, and give them their first feed. One of the things we're all told as veterinary students is the gestation of the pig. It just so happens to be around about three months, three weeks, and three days. And last but definitely not least, piglet number three pops out. She had a very smooth birth. It was a normal size litter. That's what I would expect from a very small mum. She had three. A week later, Perky and her three new piglets are all doing fine. Now the hunt is on to find the piglets a new home. Something that started just for my own pleasure, um, we sold the first litter we had, and so carried on from there really, totally taken over my life, which I probably wouldn't have chosen to do. We're proud of the babies. Uh, it would be no different in any circumstances to a dog breeder showing puppies or uh, somebody bred cat showing a beautiful kitten. The cute factor with piglets is incredible. Next to teddy bears, I, I don't really know of anything that people don't love more. It's not easy. If you have set your heart on getting one of these critters, remember they will grow to about a metre in length they will ruin your garden. You need secure fencing to keep them in and a hut for them to sleep in. And unfortunately, you're not allowed to walk them in public. Three weeks on, and two of the little piglets are about to meet their new owners, the Davis family. Hi, how are you doing? Fantastic, thank you. Lovely to see you again. It's one of those things I've always wanted, and I've always thought I'll do it one day, but never got around to it, and then I've seen an advert. Went online, found this one, went over and seen Mark and just fell in love straight away. So I ended up with two. They're all inoculated, ready. What do you think, Kim? So cute. <laughs> Have you named them yet? Pepper and Roscoe. All right. <laughs> when I got back from holiday, Mum was like, oh, I've got something to tell you. And I was like, what? She's like, oh, we're getting pigs. And I was like, oh, how many? She's like, oh, one. I, like, oh, I want one. So now we've got two. Your is that, one, isn't it? Is the pepper? boy, Roscoe. Yeah, Roscoe. 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 And then the black one's Pepper. When we spoke to Mark first, he, he couldn't guarantee how small they're going to stop. But he said, as long as they get to the size of a small dog, and we're happy with that anyway. It's only like buying a puppy, isn't it? When the puppies are dead cute, obviously now the little pigs are dead cute, but they are going to grow. But I, I should imagine they'll stay cute as well. Nice there. Good pin. In we go. There we go. There's one fella. You can train them, they can do pretty much most things. Although we've built them a pen here, we want to introduce them with the dogs and take them in and out of the house like the dogs. So hopefully, sit, lie, we just like the dogs. They're so cute. Oh, and they were just sort of sniffing around. That's really cute. Not many people would call our next animals cute. I'm on my way to Essex. Where I'm going to meet a big carnivore with a bad reputation. In Africa, they live in huge clans. The two I'm going to see here live in Colchester. We're here to see some very special inhabitants, a pair of spotted hyena called Calabi and Abu. We've been at the zoo for just over a year now. This gorgeous girl down here is Calabi, the female, and the male is snoozing at the back, typical. He's Abu. They came to us as a breeding pair, and um, they didn't know each other, so we had to mix them here. They met here, and they love each other. They really do. There are between three and four species of hyena because some people don't think that the yard wolf is a true hyena, but the spotted hyena, like these two, are the biggest, and these two are very special because they're the only pair in the UK. Aren't you? Hyena are totally misunderstood creatures. They really are one of my favourites of the large carnivores. Incredibly complex social structures. And they're seen as filthy scavengers, but they're very successful hunters. They've also got some of the strongest jaws 
in the natural world, which I'm sticking my fingers very close to. Look at those teeth. They are absolutely huge. When you see just how big they are, but they've evolved to bite through buffalo femurs, thigh bones of enormous creatures. They're really friendly. A boo, he's like really laid back and he does actually uh, let you put your hands through the bars and have a little bit of a tickle. Uh, Calibi's a bit nervous and always has been since day one, but, but yeah, they're really playful. A boo likes Calibi's attention. They run around with each other, they play chase. Uh, a boo loves it and uh, so does Calibi as well. Calibi is heavily pregnant and due to give birth very soon. Hyena reproductive biology is really odd because the female hyena are so dominant, they actually have more testosterone, the male hormone, than even the males do. And this has caused massive change in their reproductive tract, so things are very, very difficult when giving birth. In the first litter that Calaby had nine months ago, she actually lost her first cub, and that's not that uncommon even in the wild. So this second time around, Everyone's on tenterhooks. Calibi, good girl. Are you going to come out? He? Calibi's obviously responded to her name, lifted her, her head up there, but obviously being very heavily pregnant, it doesn't, you know, quite unwilling to move and exert energy she, she needs. <laughs> Later that night, Calibi gave birth to twin cubs. The keepers grabbed a camcorder and managed to get these shots of the cubs at just a few hours old. Everything looks great so far. They're both alive, both seen suckling, and uh, both are causing mom a lot of stress already. They both look strong and happy and healthy. Moving around, trying to leave the cave already. Uh, Calibi's picking them up, putting them back in the cave, doing everything that she's supposed to do. They're really cute, yeah, cute and fluffy, and. Um... One was kind of stronger than the other one, but that's quite natural uh, when they have a litter. So, over the first hurdle and the most important one, the birth. But there's another peculiarity of hyena biology, and that's that the pups come out fighting. And litter mate competition can be really severe. When mum leaves the cave, leaves them to it, unfortunately, yeah, we have seen the two, the two uh, babies having a little tussle. Two days later, something very strange happened. The keepers were baffled. Calibi and Abu were clearly fine, but of the cubs, there was no sign at all. She kept the cubs in the cave for two days, and then they suddenly disappeared, and we realised by Calibi's behaviour that they were underground. It's normal behaviour for hyena in the wild to dig a den or take over a warthog burrow and keep their cubs underground. That way they can keep them safe. But here in a zoo environment, it's very difficult for the keepers to know what's going on and whether they need to get in there and intervene. Calabi and the cubs stay down in the burrow for a few days, but the keepers take a hands-off approach and leave the hyena family alone. For everyone, it's going to be a waiting game. When they disappeared down the hole, we, um, we were a bit anxious because we didn't know if Calibi was all right or um, if the babies were all right, if they were still alive. Concerned about the safety and the health of the cubs down the burrow, the keepers risk entering the enclosure with a special camera to try and spy on the hyenas at night and see if the cubs are alive. We've seen the one. One's really, really strong. She's been coming up at night time. We've had a camera set up at night time. And we've seen her walk around a bit in its mouth. And you also saw the cub crawling up um, by itself out of the cave a little way. A few days later, Calaby begins spending more time out of the den and above ground. But she's now joined by just one solitary cub. We're definitely one there. We're not sure about the other one. The keepers have to conclude that, sadly, one of the cubs didn't make it. It is kind of expected that you do lose one in a litter. So, yeah, we did kind of expect it.
The surviving cub has been named Nafari, which means firstborn son. Caleb is now out of the den every single day. She'll call the cub out for feeding, really relaxed. It kind of pokes up and then it kind of like jumps on mum and jumps on her head and uh, she's really good with it. She doesn't get annoyed with it at all. She kind of goes along with it. She's, uh, she's playing with it. She's uh, doing really, really well. The, the male, the boo, is still part of the picture as well. He's naturally curious about his offspring, but unfortunately Calabi has been very protective. We won't let him in with a couple of metres of the cub. As he gets older, stronger, more confident, she'll gain her confidence and she will allow him to approach and be, be a part of it as well. Doing really, really well. It's really rewarding to see Calabi such a good mum and a really good outcome. Yeah, we're really pleased uh, for Calabi. She's done her job well. I've actually seen Nefari the cub this morning. He is very cute, a little bundle of fluff, but he's still very nervous, so he's hidden himself down in the burrow again. The good news is, though, that, is that Calabi is getting more and more confident and allowing Abu to get closer. And Chris has actually seen them playing together. So even though they've got this really bad reputation, hyenas can form loving family units. Now, our next animal, unfortunately, would be considered lunch by these guys because we're moving from spots to stripes. This is Paynton Zoo on the beautiful southwest coast. Zoos have traditionally found it challenging to breed certain animals in captivity. But now, with advances in animal science, breeding is much more successful. Here at Paynton, they have new baby giraffes, baby baboons, and a red panda due to give birth soon. Taru, one of the zebras, is also pregnant and ready to give birth any day now. This will be the second in 10 years. We've had another zebra foal born in March. He's doing very well now. He's Zach and he's out in the field with his mum. Now, you might think that all zebra are exactly the same, but these are Hartman zebra. They're evolved to live in mountainous areas or on plateaus, so they're very sure-footed and agile. But like all the zebra species, they're very nervous and quite twitchy. <laughs> So we put two cameras up just to make sure we capture the birth. Um, she's going to have give birth to it indoors or at least under cover, so we're, we're covering every area we can under cover and hopefully we'll capture the birth. In the wild, zebras, like most prey species, are very vulnerable when they're giving birth. So what they tend to do, even in captivity, is hide themselves away. And that's why having these CCTV cameras is so good, because it allows the keepers to be at a distance and avoid any disturbance during this sensitive time. She's probably most likely to give birth overnight. So by putting up CCTV cameras, we're getting the best chance of being able to capture the birth. We will observe it. We have vets on site which will come and have a look as well to check they're happy and make sure it's happy and healthy. It's a very sensitive time for the, the female, so we try not to disturb. We just watch from a distance and keep an eye on it. And only if we really, really need to, we will intervene. It's such a rare event to be able to witness this that none of the staff here have ever seen a zebra giving birth. But because of terrible rain, Taru held onto the baby for several more weeks some animals can delay birth awaiting better weather. Finally, deep into the night and under the gaze of the CCTV cameras, the birth looks imminent. At 12.31 a.m., you can just see the baby foal emerging at the top of the screen and the edge of the light. Almost an hour after the birth, the newborn foal takes its first tentative steps. Mum was a little bit cautious when she first had the baby. She was a first time mum. So yeah, we were keeping a close eye on it, but baby was up on its feet and it was moving around and feeding within a few hours, so good. Thank you. 
having the CCTV set up um, and in there meant that we could keep a really good close eye on her before and after the little one was born. Not only to try and catch the birth, but afterwards making sure it's suckling throughout the day and really keeping a good hands-off approach to, to making sure the baby's OK. New mums are always very nervous and it's really important that you give them time to form that close bond. Matthew's been watching to make sure that the foal is feeding every single day and I'm sure he's really looking forward to that big day that he can release them back into the herd. They're separated at the moment, just so mum and baby can bond. A couple of weeks to, to get to know each other um, and so the baby's strong enough so when we let them out we've got to let them out with another mare um, and her foal so we want to make sure that you know with that bit of running around that they'll probably do when the excitement when they first meet the foal is strong enough to be able to cope with that. Sadly for the zoo their adult male zebra Blesk, father of the two newborn foals, died last year. The male Bless that unfortunately we lost last year um, has left a, a great legacy for us. So two, two males to go on and help the stub book. It's great, it's really good, it's fantastic. It's always a relief when a birth goes smoothly and the baby arrives healthy and hearty. See you next time.